have our welcome cards again in the seats, so if this is your first time worshiping with us, we would love to know that. Uh, so if you could fill that out and then check the box for us as first time visitor, that could help us out with how we could uh, get to know you better, how we can be praying for you, and also uh, how we can get you plugged in here if that's what you desire. Uh, one quick announcement I want to say that I have, um, it's, it's youth oriented. So for Wednesday nights, our youth group is starting a How to Study the Bible series. And I want to let you know if your parents in the room wanted to say grasping God's word is going to be the text that we're going to be using. If you are not a youth in the room and you just want to know how to dive deeper into God's word, I cannot recommend a better resource than this. So uh, if you are going to be having students with us on Wednesday, it's not required for the study, but it's going to really, they have everything from follow up, uh, what you can do at home to, to grow and, you know, the things that you need and things that you don't need for Bible study in a proper context. So, uh, grasping God's word, come see me after, um, and I can help get you a link, but just want to let you guys know. Uh, well, at this point, if we can stand and greet those around you, and we'll prepare for worship. went to Jamaica. Operation Christmas Child continues to move right along. Our goal is 200 boxes and uh, school supplies. I do want you to have on your mind that our uh, we are a drop-off center for this area, so start thinking about November 18th to the 25th when you could um, be a part of that drop-off center. Backpack will be resuming, as will Good News Club as have many ramps and projects been built all over the place. And if you want to see pictures of those, I think you could get those from Dan Brown. But the effort that I'm going to talk to you about this morning is delivering cards to the landings. And just in case you wonder how that would work, is there's a sign-up, very simple, no technology, I love it. Anyway, there's a, there's a sign out there, and all the months for 2024 signed up for right now except for September. And if you're thinking, oh, good grief, I wish I'd have signed up. Everybody's going to go. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Everybody's going to go in December and deliver cards. We'll have a church-wide time that we'll all go and hand the residents of the landings. So how does that work? Okay. Your um, um, cards are provided by our prayer and card ministry, which meets every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. By the way, I'll just remind you, all of you, that every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, you're prayed for. Uh, there's a small team right now, if you feel led to be a part of that, but you're prayed for. And if you will put a prayer request, this is a little side comment, but if you'll put a prayer request on those prayer cards and put them in the offering plate, we will pray for you specifically if you have a need, not generally. But we'll pray for you specifically. So just letting you know that. But we provide those cards. Now through the gener generosity of one of our church members, whose name is Wanda Steeles, she <laughs> made homemade cards that we can that we can hand out at the landings. And they're just really, really special. And so they will sit on their dressers or wherever. And so our 
team on Tuesday will prepare these cards. They will have on the first name and then down in the corner the actual birth date of the person. So when you go to the landings, which is at 4143 Haywood Road in Mills River right down here, when you go in, you of course have to gain access by, by pushing a button for the uh, door to open. And then you go in. Now, there will not be a room number, and a lot of that's, to be honest, HIPAA kind of things. So you'll go in, and they will give you the room number, and I just usually write the room number on the side so I know exactly where to go. There are the residents, and then there are also the memory care residents, and you are welcome to go in there. The staff is fine with that. You do have to gain or push special access into that side. So we want them to know that we're saying happy birthday from the people at French Broad Baptist Church. Their birthday will be right on there, you know, this month. Um, I think the choir went just last Wednesday night. There were six birthdays. Sometimes there'll be three. Sometimes there'll be two. But you can say, you know, we know you had a birthday on July 16th, and we want to just wish you happy birthday from the people at our church. Um, if they are, you can visit as long or as short. Usually, usually it's pretty short, usually. Uh, and you can tell, you can judge if how much you, you need to say. Um, it's really interesting, I think one time we did a, um, we did a card for, a, for one of the men that had a dog on it and I remember taking it in and I don't know, it was just a really sweet interaction because he had, of course, had a dog as a pet and, it's just, it's just a very, very sweet time. And if the door is closed, you know, just knock gently and, uh, and go in and visit. To be honest, it's one of those projects that you think, um, I'm going to be doing this, and instead you walk out and so much is done for you. I just had one verse that I wanted to read from 1 Chronicles 28.20. David also said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and courageous and do the work. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the temple of the Lord is finished. So to us, and I love to personalize verses, for us he's saying, for us to be strong and courageous and don't be afraid because God is with us. He will not fail us or forsake us until all our work is finished for him. Thank you. As our team comes forward, we just take a moment and pray before we begin our worship time today. Would you stand as we just pray together? Father God, as we have come into your presence and we have celebrated your good works as you empower us through your spirit to do them, we give you all the glory, we give you all the thanks, we give you all the praise, and we ask that you would empower us to continue these works so that others may see and know what a glorious, wonderful, loving, awesome God we serve, and that you may be lifted high, and we ask it all in Jesus' name.
Will you join me as we pray together? Holy Father, we do stand in awe of you, and even as we have sung in this place this morning, that is our desire to be uh, more in awe of the God who can speak all things into existence, a God who is good and gracious and kind, a God who uh, has all things under his control and in his hand. And so we know in this hour in which we live, uh, Lord, you are teaching us how to live graciously, how to follow your Son and to be created more into his image. And we truly do not want to fail you, O oh Lord, or uh, the purpose for which you have placed us here in this place. At this time in history, uh, we know it's not an accident that we were born uh, at the time we were and that we are living in these days that we are, uh, that you have a special and unique purpose for each of us. Help us to fulfill that, uh, Lord, as we walk out our journey with you. And help us to do so leaning on you and leaning into friendship with one another and fellowship with one another. Teach us, O oh Lord, to be good stewards of the time that we have and to make the most of every opportunity in this place, in this time, in this journey. And Father, we're so grateful that you have returned our students and our adults from Vermont, those who've been away on mission, Lord, far from us, Thank you for all that they have accomplished there in the time they have been away. Thank you that they have been returned safely to their homes. And uh, Father, we also thank you for those who have been on mission just down the street at the landings and across the street at their neighbors this week. And just bringing your light and love and your encouragement and your hope that is found in Jesus. And you've called us to be those vessels that you may fill and your hope may be dispersed. We pray for those who cannot be with us for the needs of our nation as well as our neighbor. Would you hear our voices and our hearts as we lift those before you just now as well. you, oh God, for your spirit that intercedes on our behalf with words that we cannot express. And thank you that you have heard us in this place. And may you be glorified through your work in each and every life, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. You know, it's my joy always as a pastor to be able to participate in some very special occasions, uh, one of which uh, is today. Uh, you know, when Jesus was born, his parents brought him to the temple in Jerusalem, as was the custom. And they presented the young child there before the Lord, dedicating themselves uh, to uh, following his ways, giving thanks to God for the gift of this child. And from time to time, parents here in our fellowship also come before you as a family of faith presenting themselves and their children before the Lord and before you as a congregation. I hope that each of you received uh, a green sheet like this when you came in because you have a part in the dedication of children uh, and families here in our fellowship. I want to invite TJ and Christy Kirkpatrick to come and uh, Chloe and Brecklin, their children, to come and stand before us this morning as they have requested the opportunity to be able to do so you might see and know their family and pray for them. So you guys are here. And I'll let you as parents, it's so good to come on beautiful kids today, find your place. There we go, here we go. Um, it's so good to have you here in this place. And uh, it's an awesome thing to come before God and to dedicate yourself as parents, as well as to dedicate your beautiful children to the Lord. So I'll invite you parents, if you will, uh, to read the first part, which is your commitment. Uh, I may ask you to do that together. Thank you. 
other opportunities for Brent and McCoy to do so. Amen. It's an awesome commitment that you have made. Congregation, I want to invite you to stand with this couple and with this family because I want to invite you to commit to them as well as a community, of, a member of the community of faith. So will you join me as we also make our commitment as a member of this community of faith? Father, we thank you for the gift of family, that you have designed it to be so. And I thank you for these parents, for TJ and Christy, and uh, I thank you for the home that they provide for their children, uh, for Chloe and Brecklin. And I thank you for this fellowship that they have come into this place, this community of faith, to come before you, God, to commit their lives to your ways and your will. And Father, I pray that as a congregation, we will be those shining examples that we have said we would be. And that nothing would hinder, Lord, your perfect will and way being done in this fellowship and in this family's life. We ask it in the strong name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I have a gift for you. Congregation, you may be seated. I have a little gift for you that we pray will be an encouragement and a help to you as a family as you parent your children to get interested. And then also I have for you uh, certificates of dedication that will remind you, young guys, you young guy, girl, how about that? Uh, a long time from now that your parents brought you here in this place desiring that you would know the Lord and follow him all of your life, even as they uh, desire to set an example for you in doing that. So I have a certificate for each of you for Brecklin and Whitney Kirkpatrick, you beautiful girl. And your parents will sign that later, okay? I want you guys to also be on there. And then Chloe Thomas Kirkpatrick, you too, sir. Uh, certificate for you. And I'll let you have it in case you need it later. Um, so that you will remember the special day that you were dedicated to the Lord here in this place. Thank you and may God bless you. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and continue singing as we lift our voices to the Lord. Thank you. What a wonderful example of one generation praising God's mighty works to each other. Let's just sing together. Let us, Let us in assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a
you think back across your life's journey and all those moments that you have sought him and that he answered over and over and over his faithfulness. How amazing. I invite our ushers to come as we prepare our gifts for the one who has been so faithful to us, who has given us his full and complete love in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Brother Alan, would you pray for us, please? Maybe seated.
thank you, team, for leading us so beautifully this morning in our worship. And thank you for singing so beautifully. It's good to see you all. Wow, some of you have been gone on good things, do, out here doing good things. And last week we talked about um, just how God has given us so much as our creator. We were talking about how God has given us... Um, as our creator, knowledge and wisdom. And this week I want to continue that in a little bit different way. You know, God has given us uh, just so much in terms of uh, human wisdom uh, and uh, knowledge of all kinds of things, you know, including human flight. As a matter of fact, last week, uh, last Sunday afternoon, 14 of our students and six chaperones landed safely at the airport over here in Nashville. Some of you were on that plane, that very plane. And after their flight home from New Jersey, you hear more about that next Sunday. But as I was watching them land last week, I, I'm just always, I'm just still filled with awe at human flight. At, or at, at, that something that big can travel safely millions of times a day around the world. Are you like, are you over that yet? Like, I still like, just like, really? Like, that can happen? And I see that all the time. You know, we live close to the airport, so I, I just watch that and... And I think about, well, going back to Orville and Wilbur Wright, you know, those brothers who uh, kind of helped that whole thing along. Uh, it takes just wisdom and knowledge and understanding to be able to, uh, to work with the things that God already has in place uh, to accomplish the wonderful things that he has in mind. Uh, you know, I think about where did they get the inspiration? Well, some uh, tell the story of their dad bringing them home a little rubber band powered helicopter when they were just children. And that thing flew around the house and flew up to the ceiling and they were fascinated by that and they continued to build other ones. But later they uh, started understanding and knowing in like 1896, can you imagine 1800s there, thinking about flying and how would humans actually be able to do that? And there were this man uh, named uh, German glider pilot Otto Lichtenthal uh, who was experimenting with gliders and he died, but he was someone who had studied uh, birds a lot. Where do people get this kind of wisdom? And his studies influenced the Wright brothers. In fact, Wilbur often observed, one writer says, often observed buzzards uh, you think buzzards aren't good for anything? Eh, well, maybe they are. Uh, Wilbur often observed buzzards near Ohio's Great Mi uh, Miami River, and he noticed that the birds maintained their balance in flight by adjusting the angle and position of their wings. And after, they were just struggling. They were struggling to get this thing that they were working on to fly, right? Uh, and they couldn't figure out what they were missing. And so they went back to God's creation and started observing how these buzzards seem to tip and bend and create their just at the right moment in time to be. And they said, that's it. We need to make some way where we can adjust the wings slightly enough to be. I don't understand all of that. Homie could probably, and he's a, he's a pilot kind of guy. He, he understands all that. You can ask him after service about how all that detail works. Uh, but the tips of the wings, the, the Wright brothers started making the tips of the wings to adjust and move at opposing angles so they could get their glider and eventually their biplane to fly and not crash. And every time I see a plane land, I think, isn't it amazing that the knowledge and wisdom that God has given us if we just take a moment to look at all of creation, the things that we can learn and the things that we can do, uh, it's just profound. It's astounding to me. Well, in the pursuit of knowledge, and I could ask you this question, as I ask myself, is the pursuit of knowledge and wisdom of any value anymore in our day? Or have we amassed all of the knowledge and wisdom that we need? To function and get along in the in the world, just you know, are we doing okay? Have <laughs> do we need some more wisdom in our day, or are we good? Uh, do we need some more knowledge in our day, or you know, do we have everything we need yet? Well, apparently, uh, <coughs> as recently as 2022, latest statistic: 18.58 million college students in the United States 
thought it was important because they enrolled in some institution of higher learning to pursue knowledge and wisdom uh, it, uh, that uh, those college universities might be able to afford them. Uh, most of those students were pursuing certain kinds of knowledge that would help them do certain kinds of work uh, in the future uh, so that they could make a certain kind of living and live a certain kind of lifestyle and hopefully make a certain kind of contribution to the good of mankind, but that'll come down the road, right? We hope. Knowledge and wisdom can change your life for the better, but are the colleges and universities the only place to get wisdom that'll change your life for the better? Is that the only source? Well, many people choose a college or university based on knowing uh, that they will have the opportunity to learn from some of the most prestigious and brightest minds in those settings. They want to hear and learn from the wisest, most prolific teachers on a particular subject. And so if you could take a class from the wisest person who ever lived and sit at their feet for a semester, let's say, and it wouldn't cost you anything but your time, would you do it? If you could sit in a class with the wisest person who ever lived, well, Many people say, well, Solomon was one of the wisest, if not the wisest men uh, who ever lived. You remember the story in 1 Kings? Uh, Solomon is young. He has inherited the kingdom from his father David, the kingdom of Israel. And he truly felt like a child, and the responsibilities that he faced were overwhelming. Feeling his inadequacy in the face of this responsibility, he goes to God in worship. And God appears to him in a dream and says to him, ask what I should give you. Like, what do you want me to give you? And if God asks you that question, what do you want me to give you? How would you answer it? Well, Solomon took stock of what God had already done. And he said, you have made me servant king in the place of my father David, although I'm only a little child. Solomon was young, and, but he was humble. And he realized that he didn't have what it took to carry out the work and the great responsibility that he had been, had been placed on his shoulders. And so he said, Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people. There's the humility of Solomon. And God said to him, because you've asked for this, you haven't asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but you have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I will do according to your word. Uh, indeed, I will give you a wise and discerning mind. And that is the story of how Solomon came to be such an incredibly wise king. Well, Proverbs 1, Solomon captured his writings and wisdom, if you will. If I could ask you the question, what is wisdom anyway? What is wisdom? One definition might be this. It's the ability to discern the difference between right and wrong so you can choose the right and eschew the wrong. That is, deliberately avoid it. What is the right way to fly a plane, and what is the wrong way? Well, it took Orville and Wilbur hundreds of tries to figure out the right way. And they had to have some wisdom, which they found that God had given them. Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs. You'll turn there really quickly. We'll look at it together. We'll look at Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, and then I want to give you a couple of verses that will help you to become wiser in the next 20 minutes. You ready? You ready to get wise? Well, here's where we're going to get it from. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. And he really starts his Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, with, here's why I wrote it. Here's why I'm writing it. Here's what it's for. Here's what all these sayings and these instructions are for. It's for, verse 2, gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction and in prudent behavior. D, 
doing what is right and just and fair? Anybody need a class in that? For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning. Let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. What does he say? Where do you begin? Here's what I want to give you. I want to give you some knowledge and wisdom to accomplish all kinds of things in your life. To learn how to do what is right and just and fair. To have a discerning mind if you're young or if you're, even if you're wise. To be able to understand, to, to grow your insight and understanding. So where do you begin? Well, Solomon says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and destruction. So it's important for us. We say, well, I want to be wise. Well, where do I start? Well, the message says it this way, and I love how it says it. Start with God, right? That's where we should start. That's where we should start. Start with God. The first step, I love how it's this phrase. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. The first step in learning is bowing down to God. Only fools thumb their noses at such wisdom and learning. In today's world, how many folks have learned that one thing? First lesson. Have you learned that first lesson? Have I learned that first lesson? So I have to ask myself, if I want to be wise and discerning, if I want to be able to learn how to navigate this world in a wise way, I should start not with myself or not start with anyone else, but start first with God. Well, what are Proverbs, these wise sayings for? Well, if you read the whole book, and we don't have time to do that today, but if you did read it, you would find all kinds of wisdom and sayings for life uh, in the book of Proverbs, if I uh, would say to you, you can find things uh, in there that will help you to form solid friendships. You'll be a better friend if you get the wise wisdom uh, of Solomon. Uh, words and wisdom about dating and marriage, if you're in that particular place in your life, of managing your sexuality or dealing with alcohol uh, or money management or work and career life or parenting, how to discern right from wrong and how to stay out of trouble. All that kind of stuff is in there. That's a lot, isn't it? There's a lot tucked away in the book of Proverbs. Well, here are my bits of wisdom that I want to give you today that I believe God has led me to share with you because I think if I could capture it all, those wonderful sayings and a couple of verses for me, it comes to these two, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Did I get it right? Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Trust in the Lord. Say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. You've already memorized two verses and two wise sayings that are incredibly important for life. For life. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. With all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So let's slow it down for just a minute. Do not, there are many verses, by the way, about trust in the Bible. And the scripture is just full of them. Well, you could go to Psalms, for example. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. Oh, that's a good verse, isn't it? Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. Psalm 146, 3. You can jot that one down. And say, so, well, you know, the Bible said, well, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible has a lot of wisdom in it, actually. Uh, Psalm 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we trust in who? In the name of the Lord our God. This is David's writing. Psalm 20, verse 7. Uh, what chariots and horses are you trusting in? 
that would be representative of your power and your wealth and things like that versus trusting in the name of the Lord your God. Trust in the Lord. Trust in Yahweh. Trust in Jehovah, Solomon would say. The one true and living God. Trust in Him with all your heart. When I go to sleep at night sometimes, when I'm in an unfamiliar place, and children, sometimes I share, this is a good verse to share with you, or just sometimes when you're afraid, Psalm 56.3 says, when I'm afraid, I put my trust in you, in you. So when you think about trusting God with all your heart in all the different areas of life and the big spans of things and the, the large things are just when you're in a circumstance or situation where you just are uncomfortable. God, throughout Scripture, reminds us to trust in Him. And so Proverbs chapter 3, here in this verse 5, gives us that bit of wisdom that it's a wholehearted trust that is needed for us to navigate this life. Secondly, lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because our understanding is so limited, right? Don't lean just on your own understanding of life and your own knowledge of what you should do. How many times have you got... The, the, the Orville and Wilbur tried time and time and time again out of their own understanding of how they thought a plane might be able to fly and they just couldn't get it until they watched something that God had actually made that could fly and studied it a bit and it was like, there it is. Don't lean just on your own understanding. Don't lean on it. In fact, Proverbs 28, 26 says, those who trust in their own wits are fools but those who walk in wisdom come through safely. So that's important advice for us. Don't lean on your own understanding. But what? Here's why. Isaiah helps us to understand why we shouldn't just lean on understanding. Isaiah 55, 8, 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. So when I come to a life situation, I don't want to just lean on my own understanding, but I want to have God's understanding of that situation brought into my life. Does that make sense? I want it to be the center of my thinking and my decisions to be based on his thoughts and not just my own. Does that help you as it has helped me? Now, do I always get that right? No, I don't. I certainly don't. Sometimes I go off, you know, goofy way on my own, and I usually that's where, you know, I end up in trouble. In all your ways, thirdly, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways, in all yours, in all those areas of life, and all the things that you're about to do, and all the things that you could do or might do or wish to do, in all your ways, acknowledge him. Submit to him. Submit your plans to him, the scripture says, and your plans will succeed. So it's that coming before him and submitting or acknowledging that he is God and that you are not. In all your ways, submit to him and what will happen? All your ways. That's everything you do. And he will. He will direct your path. He will guide you. He will make your path straight. There's this idea of the crooked path and the straight path. He will. He will. There's something that I think that sometimes we miss that the God of heaven has not vacated his want to or willingness to help us in life. In life situations. It's simply that we haven't given him the time or the attention, and we haven't waited before him in such ways, and ask for his wisdom before, make, you ever made a decision and then ask God to bless it? Do you follow me? God, I know what I'm going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and decide it, and I want you, God, bless me in this, because I'm going to decide it right now. I'm not asking you to tell me what to do, I'm just telling you, I want you to bless my decision. 
It didn't work out. Have you ever had that happen? Proverbs 19, 21. I love these Proverbs. Again, this Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 just takes us out and we begin to see that, wait, there's a, a relationship. Other people have seen this to be true and they would say, they would counsel us in the same way in Scripture throughout. Proverbs 19, 21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so I want to live in such a way that I'm living in line with God's purposes and not just my own. And then my plans will succeed. I have many plans. Do you have plans? Many are the plans. You know, I, I'll bet. You get to hear from our youth next week. Many are the plans in the hearts of the people who travel. <laughs> and, but sometimes those plans get adjusted and readjusted and readjusted, right? You ever have that happen? And the Lord's purpose somehow prevails in, in not the way we think necessarily it's going to work out. But there's some things that God teaches us about himself and about life and about the world. His purposes that come through, even when our plans go in ways that we hadn't expected or even didn't want. Many of the plans in a person's heart is the Lord's worship. So I have to say, Lord, if my plans aren't working out, then I'm praying that you are purposing something good in this situation. And I pray that your purpose will prevail in my life. And there's wisdom in that. Trust God from the bottom of your heart Here's the message version, translation. Eugene Peterson, I love how he sometimes just captures this in an ordinary way of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure everything on your own, out everything on your own. That's good wisdom. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Do you like it better that way? Do you like that translation? And I like just how that's said, kind of just plainly and straightly. I think it's a beautiful way of saying that. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, and he will keep you on track. Well, Solomon said that, and most would say that Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. And as his kingdom grew and his life progressed, unfortunately, he lost sight of the wisdom that God had given him. He married many wives, foreign wives, who turned his heart away from the true and living God. And he began to worship and serve other foreign gods. The God who had loved him and given him everything, his heart turned away from, and his kingdom was lost. And the people he served fell into ruin. Trust in God with all of your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways and at all times, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Let's pray. Lord, we need your wisdom in this hour. We need your guidance in this hour because... There are so many things, there are so many words, there are so many voices calling for our attention that would lead us away from you. And even the wisest man, Solomon, slowly but surely was led away from trusting and loving you with all of his heart. And God, we want to be people who love you with our whole heart and who place you at the center of every decision in our lives, knowing full well that you have our best in mind and that you love us deeply. So may we set you before us always. May we look to you for that wisdom. May you, O oh God, truly be our vision. In your precious name we pray. Amen. As we close our time this morning, there may be a, a restart.
Maybe God has spoken and said, you know, there's there's the restart that's needed. It's that you need me and my spirit living in you because without me, you will you'll just miss it. Now, how does that happen, Pastor? Well, Jesus said that those who trust in him, that those who follow him, that those who obey his commands, that his spirit, the spirit of Christ, will come and live within them and will guide them and give them direction, remind them of all the things that he has taught. You'll have the gift of the spirit of God to guide you within you through your faith in him. And I would invite you to begin such a journey today or to be a part of a fellowship which is not perfect but is pursuing the one who is. We'd love to pray for you and encourage you. Ray and I will be down front. We'd be happy to do that as we stand and as we sing. <clears throat> For you always, and that you would focus in on Him, allowing Him to direct your life, your path, um, whatever your journey may hold this week. If you happen to have been here for the first time, we're glad you chose to do that. We're glad you chose to worship here. We pray that we may be uh, God's uh, love to you in this place, not only today, but anytime you have the opportunity to worship with us again. We hope you will do so. Uh, please pray for the Kirkpatrick family. We love you guys, and we'll be praying for you. Uh, on your journey. I'm glad uh, that you are uh, journeying along with us, and we will pray that God will bless you and your family uh, all the days of your life, uh, for sure. Um, one quick announcement. If uh, we're uh, building and expanding our uh, sound and media team, and so uh, if you would like to join that team uh, and or learn more about that, I'm going to invite you to stay just after service. Uh, uh, in about 10 minutes or so. We'll just gather sort of down in this front area where we can share some information with you about how you can be a part of that team um, and uh, in a, on a rotational kind of basis, how you can learn, uh, how you can help share the message of Christ literally around the world and support the message of Christ here in our community through our sound and media ministry. 
So uh, if you'd like to do that or you just have interest, students as well as adults are able to participate. Students, middle and high school uh, are able to participate uh, in that. So just keep that in mind. And we'll do that in 10, 15 minutes or so just down here in this front. I invite Pastor Gray to have a final word and then to pray for us. Uh, many thanks to Gray and Allie and some of our uh, folks are getting their eyes back open. Um, Mark and Sela, as well as Dole and Laura, our chaperones, and all of our folks who've been away. Uh, Dan and Kim, good to have you back. Jean, I don't know if Judy's in the room. There you are. It's good to see your faces. Roy, Juanita, good to have you all back, and all of our students who were away. Uh, we missed you, and we're glad that you are back in this place. Would you pray for us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you're gracious, you're compassionate, you're slow to anger, and you're abounding in steadfast love. God, you are the author and perfecter of our faith. You are also the author and holder and keeper of knowledge and wisdom. And so uh, we thank you for that reality that uh, when, when we need wisdom, wisdom, we lean on you. Um, when we, uh, we have a personal relationship with you that we can uh, come to you for wisdom and guidance and knowledge and that you are alive uh, today, you are alive forever, and that you can hear us and you can respond. So I pray that you would guide us this week and guide us in our different avenues of mission work here locally and allow us to uh, be salt and light. It's in your son's name. Amen.